Hi guys, um, happy Witchy Wednesday. Wow, I actually remembered. So, alright, we are going to pick up where we left off with Robert Cochran and the Clan of Tupacane. So, it's pretty interesting. It gets even more interesting as it progresses. Did you guys ever remember the newsletters of, like, the pentagram or pentagram and all the newsletters that actually got mailed out like a long time ago years ago years like at least 20 years ago yeah so yeah those are no longer out there so sadly all right um where did i leave off it is pos sorry right, so all right we were talking about none of his family had uh, any magical whatever in nature so okay now it is possible that the um aunt lucy was a sw uh, pseudonym for a non-family member or possibly a code word. So Cochran also said that he was taught the craft by an older male relative who have may who may have been his great uncle. He's too all over the place with his heritage. So um, he once showed a photograph an el of an elderly man sitting on a park bench uh, to the garden gardenarian uh, witch Doreen Valiant. Valiente, is that how you say her name? Or how, whoever. And she believed that this was the, um, a mysterious relative. That almost looked like something completely different. Um, in another letter to Bill Gray, Cochran described himself as a peller. And now that is a Cornish term. So that is a Cornish term that, you know, in Cornwall, a peller is a healer, an exorcist, um, and you can also, you know, um, you know, uh, curative charms, regenerative charms, but you also both work both uh, dual, you know, dual whatever. So, but yes, that is a Cornish. It's for you know, for a cunning man. Um, let's see. So he described himself as a pillar, a Cornish term for a cunning man, healer, and exorcist. Elsewhere, he had described himself as a man of odd or ode, which is Woden. So he goes on to say that the. People, the traditional witches, are formed into families or clans and describe themselves by the local name of the deity that they worship. So that does make sense. Regional witchcraft, so I do agree with that part. So Cochrane said that he came from the country of Oak, Ash, and Thorn and was a member of the people of Goda. Really? Really, Mr. Cochrane? Were you? So of the uh, clan of Tubal Cain. Oak, Ash, and Thorn was a reference to a sacred place where the well, these trees grew, uh, regarded in folklore as the entrance to the fairy realm. So other traditional names for witches, he added, were the good people, and that also applied to the fairy folk. Um, we have the green gowns, uh, women only. We have Jack and Jill's from the popular nursery rhyme that possibly refers to an old Norse myth about the sun goddess and moon god. And we have horsemen, in relation to the rural secret society of horse whisperers, or the horseman's word, um, either his father or grandfather belonged to and wizards, a wise man. I don't like that word, wizard or warlock. Neither one. I hate them. Um, strangely, Cochran never explicitly used the common historical term of a cunning man or cunning woman. So the term people of Goda used by Cochrane in this description of names for witches is a controversial one, yeah, and has caused some debate as to its actual meaning. So in an article written in the White Dragon magazine, uh, Gary Nottingham identified the name Goda with the fairy wife of a local um, Stropshore hero, Wild Edric. <laughs> okay. That's what yeah, I we read about that in uh, what's her name Gemma Gary's books. So yeah, um, yeah. He further suggested that he was the or that she was the uh, wow. What I don't know something goddess of the clan of Tubal Cain. Goda Guda or Goda G O D D A was also the name of a Germanic goddess of agriculture, abundance, and prosperity whose variants included Fra, um, Holda, and Old Mother Holly. So, Dame, um, Hab how God. Habonita and Bertha. That's the easiest one that I can pronounce, is Bertha. So, <laughs> that's sad. Uh, there are many, including this writer, 
who um, adhere to the belief that the term the people of Goda used by Cochrane refers to worshippers of a localized goddess uh, regarded as the Queen of Elfheim or Fairy. So yeah, that is where I know her from. That is where we know her from. I do, personally. So this is uh, backed up by the fact that Cochrane and his coven often worked at the stripper stones in Shropshire. In local folklore, that site is regarded as the haunt um, of the wild hunt, traditionally led by the fairy queen. So I think that is pretty amazing. Um, Lady Goda, it does look like Lady Gaga, it's Lady Goda, or uh, Goda, and her human husband, Edric the Wild, uh, coincidentally, Ronald White and George Standard, uh, both lived in Shropshire <laughs> during their retirement. So the article in Psychic News um, marked the beginning of Cochrane's short writing career. <laughs> yeah, it did too. So the Kabbalistic magician William Gordon Bill Gray introduced him to the newly formed Witchcraft Research Association, and he would subsequently wrote, or he would subsequently wrote several articles for its news pe newsletter Pentagram. So the WRA had been founded in 1964 by a London witch using the pseudonym um, John Math to research the craft um, and attempt to bring together different traditions. How well do you think this went over? <laughs> yeah, no. In his daily life, John Math was actually a son of the um, Earl of Gainsborough. I wonder if that is where we get Earl T from. I don't know. Just wondering. And he served as a captain in the Royal Marines during the Second World War. So the first issue of Pentagram appeared in August of uh, 1964, and its editorial announcement that a dinner for members and their guests would be held in a London hotel in October. So at this event, um, the Gardnerians um, sat at one table, and Robert Cochran and his traditional friends occupied the other. <laughs> it's totally not even... Yeah, it didn't even work out. Now, Bill Gray also, well, who also attended, recorded that. <laughs> this is really funny. The meal that was served was one of the worst he had ever experienced in his life, and better, better ones could be had in prison. That's terrible. Now, in the first issue of the pentagram, Doreen Valiente wrote an open letter of welcome to all members of the WRA. She claimed that due to the persecution of the past, um, the old traditions of witchcraft had become fragmented, with one coven or group of covens um, preserving what had been handed down to them, So, while others retained and placed emphasis on other aspects of the craft. So she hoped that the association would, as a United Nations of the craft, and promote research into surviving traditions that might otherwise have been lost really good sounds are really good it sounds really good she was also optimistic that it could promote the mutual understanding and unity of purpose that would make this research possible now in hindsight this was an overly optimistic view as a serious division between members of the WRA who were Wiccans and the traditional witches would soon to become um, apparent Valiente claimed that the WRA was now contacting covens that had no connection with Gardner at all. This indicated, she said, that the old craft had survived all over Britain in, fragmented, in a fragmented state. Because of the historical uh, persecution, each had its own version of witchcraft, and it was going to be an exciting project to compare the different traditions and to see how the, they both um, complemented and differed from each other. And that is really interesting. It's really neat. We do that right now. Um, uh, there's more, uh, a lot more to it, though, now. It's very controversial for anything, you know, anybody to talk about witchcraft or any kind of pagan faith. So, now, again, due to the infighting that was about to break out between the Wiccans and the traditional witches in the WRA, sadly, this project never got off the ground. So, during Valiente had left Gardner's Coven based at the Naturist Camp in Brickett Wood, um, Hertfordshire, in the late 1950s because of her disagreement with his desire for oh, to seek um, sens sensational publicity. So also because she believed that he had invented that so-called 
laws of the craft. How many people here follow Cochrane's teachings? I am blurry. There we go. Do you guys follow anything of Cochrane's? So, <laughs> and now in the early 60s, she was a member of the traditional coven of um, Atho, run by Gardner's ex-rival Charles Cardell. The, in 1964, Valiente was introduced to Robert Cochran by mutual friends at the annual Midsummer Gathering at the Brotherhood of uh, Essences. And that's an esoteric group taking their name from the original Jewish sect of Essences in Biblical times. So held on um, Glastonbury tour. So for some unknown reason, this event always attained... Oh, attracted occultists from all traditions. Well, of course, it's midsummer. It's a midsummer celebration. It's going to attract everybody. Everybody. So, she was initially impressed by Cochrane's charisma and his claim to be a follower of a hereditary witchcraft tradition. Valiente later lost faith in Cochrane and she became disillusioned with his claims to have had a family tradition. That's why it's just so, it's very important these days for people to not lie about their family traditions and their tr their craft traditions and, you know, all of that, because it's, it's not going to do you any good. Who's going to take you seriously? So this seems to have been confirmed for uh, her after Cochran's death in 1966, when this widow told Valiente that Cochran was not a hereditary witch and had invented the witch stories about his family. Right there at that point, that's when my heart went to my feet because I really did like Cochran. I liked what he had to say. Uh, at that point, my my heart went to live in my feet. So, oh boy. Now, as we have seen, another of relatives, another relative of Cochran's, his nephew Martin Lloyd, has also claimed that uh, none of Cochran's immediate family were involved in witchcraft. However, having undergone a difficult separation from her husband and his traumatic death by suicide. Yeah, he did die by suicide, I forgot. Um, perhaps Cochran's wife was not that most, was not the most unbiased of um, commentators of his legitimacy. So, John Math, who subsequently became a member of, the, of uh, Cochran's coven, asked him to contribute some articles to the pentagram. Well, to pentagram on, on his version of the craft. So the first of these contributions was The Craft Today, published in the November 1964 issue. So in it, he condemned to condemn the fact that witchcraft had become a form of escapism for people who wanted to reject modern society and return to a more simple way of life. In fact, he described it as an attempt to deny the responsibilities of the 20th century. Um, I don't believe that to be true for a lot of people, no. So he went on to say that this that the student of the mysteries, the traditional witch, is a seeker for truth or wisdom. This was, yeah, he is just completely all over the place. Now, in his opinion, magic was a byproduct of that search. Okay, understandable, kinda. As a development of will, it is a product of the soul in its search for ultimate knowledge or gnosis. So, well, that does make sense, but I mean, still, it just, I don't... I can't take his writing seriously now. So this mystical and gnostic approach contrasted um, to modern Wicca with its emphasis on being uh, the goddess. So worshiping uh, survival of an ancient nature and fertility religion, according to Cochran, elements of the ancient pagan mysteries had survived in folklore, myth, and legend, and they were the means by which man can perceive his own inherent destiny. So because of the persecution of pagans by the early church, the surviving mysteries were forced underground, joined forces with the folk beliefs of the masses, and thus became traditional witchcraft. I don't um, under really agree with that, not, not too much. But unfortunately, what survived became static and remote from its original purpose, which was to provide spiritual enlightenment to its inherents. So, alright. We're going to cut that off there, so that's pretty interesting. I mean, wow. So yeah, he does. He's quite... Quite the person in his okay. So let me see in his article. Let me write this down, or I'll forget. Uh, 
there we go. Notes. Notes everywhere. So yes, very different, very different man. Not too keen on continuing with him, but that is just the way that this is going to work. So, what do you guys think? Hmm? Eh, I don't know either. Very different man, so... But alright guys, um, I hope you're enjoying this. Um, I'm really enjoying reading the book, so yeah, um, what, what am I reading again? <laughs> The Children of Cain. Yes, definitely, definitely go out and get that book. I mean, it is really amazing. Historical witchcraft, I mean, it just it, it compares everything. Everything is torn apart, ripped apart, shredded to pieces, and examined. And I love it. And it's just amazing. So. <laughs> Alright, guys. I love you all. And I hope you guys have a great Witchy Wednesday. So, all my love, all the way from... Venus. All the way back down. And yeah, everybody have a good day. I love you all very much, and I'll see you all tomorrow.